We have previously discussed the overwhelming testimony of the economic tablets of ancient Babylon. Thousands upon thousands of tablets have been found that are time stamped with the month, day, and year of the ruling monarch. Tablets have been found for each year of Nabopolassar's 21 years, for each year of Nebuchadnezzar's 43 regnal years, for the two years of Amal Marduk, the four years of Nergal Sharizer, the three months of Labashi Marduk's accession year, according him with no regnal years, and the thousands of economic tablets for the 17 years of Nabonidus. Using the accumulation of these thousands of tablets, when we count back from the last year of Nabonidus, the year Babylon fell, 539 BC, we can determine that Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year, the year Jerusalem was destroyed, was 587 BC. Indeed, when it comes to the truth about the Neo-Babylonian chronology, and more importantly, the year of Jerusalem's destruction, these many thousands of clay tablets that have been unearthed in the last 150 years give clear testimony. Indeed, the stones are crying out. In order to move back Nebuchadnezzar's 18th year from 587 BC to 607 BC, there would have to be a period of 20 years unaccounted for. By the thousands of tablets that have been accumulated, not one can add a year to the reign of any of these kings, nor is there even a hint of any other kings. However, could there have been gaps between certain kings? 20 years would be quite a gap, a fifth of the Neo-Babylonian chronology. Even without anyone on the throne, business would have to go on. Economic tablets would have to be dated. Surely, this would show up somehow in the accumulated transactions of the time. So how can we be sure there were no gaps? Enter the Babylonian firm named the Sons of Agibi. They were a family-owned bank involved in loans, estate sales, mortgages, transactions both large and small. This business spanned many generations, passing from one family head to the next. Indeed, this family was in business for over 200 years, spanning three world powers, Assyria, Babylon, and Persia. For the sons of Agibi, over 3,000 economic texts have been found, which had been preserved in jars and buried, only to be found again in the late 19th century. By examining the economic text of the Gibby firm, we can trace the family business from family head to family head. And what is more important, we can confirm the Neo-Babylonian chronology. For instance, a man named Shula headed the Gibby firm for 20 years, from the third year of Nebuchadnezzar to his 23rd year. Then came Nabu Ahi Adina, who headed the firm from the 23rd year of Nebuchadnezzar to the 12th year of Nabonidus for 38 years. After him came I.T. Marduk Balatu, who headed the firm for 23 years, up until the first year of Darius I, king of Persia. Altogether, the administration of these three men over the Gibi Bank spanned 81 years. Since the first year of Darius I is 521 BC, counting back 81 years brings us to the third year of Nebuchadnezzar, 602 BC. That makes his 18th year, 587 BC. The thousands of tablets that have been found for the sons of Gibi show there are no gaps in the Neo-Babylonian chronology. Not only that, there is corroborating testimony from another source of evidence, namely the obituary of the mother of Nabonidus.